Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. In this episode I show you this laptop from 1987. It's a Sharp PC4521. This line, the, PC, the Sharp PC4500 line, was released from Sharp in 1987 and there was three machines three versions from this laptop. They were sold back in the day and this was the PC 4501, the 4502 and the 4521. In this case we have the 4521 here. The 4501 was the lowest entry in this line and has 256 kilobytes of RAM and the floppy drive, no backlit LCD and no numeric keypad on the keyboard. The 4502 was the middle version in this case and the 4521 was the highest version and both came with 640k of RAM and includes two floppy drives in the case of the 4502 or uh, one floppy drive and one hard drive in the case of the 4521. So we should have here uh, a hard drive with 20 megabytes inside um, and the 4501 was later sold for 900 and 59 US dollars and uh, so this become the first laptop under $1,000 available. This machine was uh, designed and developed by Sharp Electronics and Vadim Incorporated. Vadim Incorporated was a design manufacturer and consumer computer design consultant from California. In this laptop we have uh, IBM 8188 compatible CPU and NEC V40. The clock speed uh, was selectable from 4.77 MHz up to 7.16 MHz. Personal computers with an 8188 processor are mostly uncommon. The 4501 in the lowest entry came with 256k RAM, non backlit monochrome LCD, it was CGA compatible and a 78 key keyboard without numeric keypad and 3.5 inch floppy drive and came with MS-DOS 2.11. The middle one, the 4502, has 640 ki kilobyte of RAM, a backlit display, a numeric keypad and in this case then an 88 key keyboard and two 3.5 inch floppy drives. And it came with MS-DOS 3.21 and GW Basic. And the most expensive um, variant, the 4,521, came with one floppy drive and one megabyte of hard drive. And all entries have 1.6 megabytes of RAM. And the 4,521 we have here. And all. Variants has um, one parallel port, one external floppy port, um, and so you can use an external five, point, um, five and a quarter inch floppy drive. And there are two proprietary expansion slots. They have a video card for output CGA on a monitor, RAM card for additional memory. And the EEPROM card and serial port 
card and 1,200 baud modem card. So that is from the specs. And now let's take a closer look. So here we are on the bench. And you see this was the cover from the upside. Here's the loop with the LCD. The keyboard, numeric keypad, function keys, setup key for the BIOS, the arrow keys. It's a good feeling keyboard, types very well. It's a little bit dirty. Here we have the battery compartment. There is no battery inside, but here we have a cable with two plugs. In this case, this might be go through the battery connector. That can we see later. I think you can't you can power on this uh, laptop without the battery. And so it's, uh, if you use this, you can start the computer. On the right side, we have the contrast key, uh, contrast knob and the brightness knob. The three and a half inch floppy drive. Here is by the 4502 the second floppy drive in this case should be the hard drive behind this cover we have the power the power key and we have a battery jack on the back side we have nothing we have here a slot cover so nothing. On the left side, we have the serial port. It's an RS232C, the external floppy connector, and the parallel port and printer port. And here you can have um, ports for the other um, expansions. On the bottom, we have a handle and under this cover here we open this cover and and it in. Here we have RAM. It's a nice little feature. You can get to the RAM from the underside. So the rubber feet are all in place and intact. Here we have the speaker, the 20 megabit hard drive, sharp PC 4521. And here we have a dip switch. And here we have the label from the post to use in Germany. So let's hook this up to a bench power supply and test if this thing are booting up. So and now let's start this laptop. It 
needs uh, 6 volt DC. It's very noisy. So take a while. And here we have picture. I try to zoom in a little bit so you can see better. Contrast now, brightness now, working fine. So here we have MS DOS version 5. Uh, then we need a little more light. So, let's see. Yeah, it beeps a little bit. I don't know why. You see on this hard drive there is nothing on it. So we can load DOS shell. If you see it loads. And this computer works perfectly. Oh, you can press F10. And then see this thing is in German. Yeah, we are in Germany, and so here is yeah. It says no hard drive available, but I don't think so. We on the hard drive. Let's see, there is nothing on no Windows, only DOS. Let's power it off. We're pressing the button, powering off. Now it's off. Oh. And there we have it. So let's go back on the bench and open this up and let's take a look inside. So here we back on the bench. You've seen this uh, PC 4500 is working and now we open it up and take a look inside. First we start with the battery compartment. And disconnect. This cable. Then we remove this screw. On the inside we have a nut. Then we flip it over and we have here, here, here and here and here some flip screws. So the screws are out, now we flip it over again. Then we lift this up carefully. On this side, 
the connector is a little bit in the way. So we put this cable off. Then we take this cable off. It's a little bit fiddly. Now, now we can stand this up. This cable off. And here we have this, the upper part. We uh, disconnected. Here we have the switch for this button here to power it on. This is for the the LEDs. This little PCB. The monitor cable. So put it on the side. And here is the keyboard. Is connected here. Oh, remove this carefully. You see it's a ribbon cable. It's in good shape. This keyboard. So and here we have the hard drive. This card a little bit closer. This card is the controller for the hard drive and the hard drive has a different connector, not the regular IDE connector, a smaller one. This is the controller card for the floppy drive, for the external. Underneath this Metal part is the back side of the RAM cartridge. So this chip and this chip is rated for 1988. Another screw on the side. And we can lift this carefully out. You see it's on this connector. Oh. It's a DB25 connector. This is for the floppy drive. We have the floppy drive controller. We have the EEPROM, the ROM from this computer. So, the power cable goes here. That's the Power regulation and for the brightness and the contrast on the monitor. See the, the hard drive, floppy drive, a fan, a noisy one. Let's see if we can take this more apart.
Very cool. Mm. There we have. You can take this hard drive out. The hard drive controller, you see, is a smaller connector. It's an Alps hard drive with 20 megabytes. So, it's a floppy drive. And there's no more to show. In this. You see it's a little nice small machine. It's a regular three and a, three and a half inch floppy drive. Yeah. Let's put this thing together. Something we can try maybe in a, another video is to replace this hard drive with an SD card or combat flash. So. Now the keyboard. And you see it's very clean. I don't clean this. It's already clean. It's good stored. And now the case. One is a little bit fiddly. There we have it. Oh, it's in there. Put this power cable out. So, it's very, very fiddly to put this thing, thing together, you see, case screws. So this screw 
screw on the side we put here Assembled. I left this cable off. Then I will take some cleaner and clean this and try to remove this tape. So, to clean this computer, I use universal cleaner and the first we try is to remove this tape luckily it pulls very easy off And not much residue left. To clean the residue off, I use isopropyl alcohol. See, it works very, very well. And for the rest of we use this cleaner. You can use also window cleaner and like cleaner like this. Little bit of dust in the grooves. I use my brush to clean it off. A little bit of sticky residue. So we use isopropyl alcohol again. It goes right off. not that dirty little bit scuff marks and a little bit of sticky residue here and there and a lot of dust and finger grime
keyboard is a little bit dusty. case is uh, not plastic it's metal so you can uh, use a magic eraser if you need it there is uh, no texture you can damage And the last thing we do is we connect this cable to the computer again. And then we make a final test if this thing almost works. So I can put also a rechargeable battery in here with 6 volts, but I don't need this, it's not a daily driver. Now we're ready for the final test. And now after cleaning and reassembling, the final test if this laptop finally works. It's barely to see on camera. I'll try to adjust this. Some additional light, it's yeah, 
Yeah, it's a little bit visible. So reboot. Need a little bit of time. Yeah, it's bad to see our, uh, you see this, the top is working, it's not much on the hard disk, yeah, uh, powering off. And if you see, we have a clean and working nice laptop from the 80s. Perfect. So we end up this video here. You see, we have this nice little laptop from the 80s. So it's a little bit of uh, PC archaeology. In this episode, there is no need to repair or something else. And we have cleaned this, we have a little bit look around. And the next part for future video can make um, an SD card inside and uh, put the hard drive for, uh, out. We can install a different MS-DOS or trying out Windows 3.1 or something like this. So um, we have some projects that we can make with this laptop. And so I hope you liked it. If you liked it, put thumbs up. If you want more videos like this or from Amigas and game consoles and so on, put uh, the uh, subscription button down below. Please write a comment if you want to. And so I see you in the next video. Bye.